Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we have an interesting reading vlog. I came across two books that have something I really relate to. If you do not know, I have celiac disease, which is a autoimmune disorder where your body is not able to properly ingest gluten. So I eat gluten-free constantly. If I ate gluten, it would feel like I have the stomach flu. I would be on the toilet for days. <laughs> I have never read a book with specifically celiac disease. I've read a few books where characters eat a gluten-free diet for their own chronic illnesses or other autoimmune disorders that help them and benefit them, but I have not read a book yet that has specifically celiac disease representation. And I have come across two that I'm going to read for this vlog. So I'm interested in reading these, number one, because of the representation. I wanna know if it's done well. Number two is these books sound somewhat somewhat interesting. These would not be at the top of my TBR if they did not have this representation in them. The first one that I came across is 10 Trends to Seduce Your Best Friend by Penny Reed. I have read a Penny Reed book before. I read her Neanderthal Seeks Human book, um, but I haven't read any of her other ones. I think this book does have celiac disease representation. I saw it, I believe, in an Instagram post. I don't know which character has it, um, but I I think it might be the heroine has it in this book, so I'm excited to read it. This is the romance between Winnie and Byron, and they are not best friends. Yes, they've known each other for years, but they're not even friendly. Winnie considers them to be casual acquaintances who find each other very tolerable, especially when he's being condescending, which is all the time. The truth is they have nothing in common. She's a public school science teacher. Ooh, a teacher, cool. And he's a pretentious, joyless double PhD turned world famous best-selling fiction author. <laughs> she loves sharing her passion for women in STEM and building a community via social media. And he hates all socialization, virtual or otherwise. So why are they faking a hashtag best friend relationship for millions of online spectators? When a simple case of tit for tat trend between non-friends leads to a wholly unexpected kind of pretend, nothing is simple. Sometimes it takes a public audience to reveal the truth of private feelings and rarely, very rarely should you believe what you see online. We'll see what I think about this one. This would not be on like my priority list if it didn't have celiac disease read. This book is 436 pages and it's not on audio yet, I don't think. Um, and so I'm having to physically read the ebook through my library. Okay, I looked on Amazon, it does have an audiobook, but it is uh, $18. I'm not paying that. So I will force myself to read physically, well, ebook read an 800 page book, not 800, whoa, 400 page book, dang. And then the other book that has me a little worried is Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. I've only read book one in the series. This book isn't as romantic as book four. So I'm going to be skipping the other two books because I don't feel like reading them, which is not what I normally do. I normally read books in order, but for this case, I'm just not feeling reading the other two currently. Who knows, maybe I'll read the other two. Well, We'll see, we'll see. But this one is apparently about a guy that I did meet in book one named The Russian. His name is Vlad and he was first like a side character. I don't think Lissa K. Adams was actually gonna write him a book. My only issue was like in book one, he was very stereotyped as the tutor, the farter, the one who would rip it all day long. And apparently he's the one with celiac disease, which is very interesting to me, which I'm excited to read about because celiac disease is predominantly in women. Um, and so I'm very interested to read about a man who has it because I personally never cro come across a man who has celiac disease. However, if the, if the like main symptom that this guy is going to have is just Tootie Magooty all the time, I may not be very happy. Cause yes, we got Tootie problems, okay? But no way in heck would that actually happen in public for me around other people. I'd get up and leave. Like, no, that if I, like, no, like, you know what I mean? Like, I would never do that around other people, even my friends, even my family, like I get up and leave the room. Again, maybe we're different people, whatever the case may be. But if that's the main side effect for him in this book, I'm gonna be a little bit peeved because that is a stereotype. <laughs> like, we're not just tutors, like, dang, we have tummy issues, but not like that only. I'm judging this book before I read it, okay? I really want to like it. I liked book one in this series. I'm just hoping that that is not what only happens to this hero. Anyway, so this is a romance between Elena and Vlad. 
Um, they're both from Russia. They are married, actually. They're childhood best friends. They're married because Vlad moved to the United States where he's a professional hockey player and he married Elena so she can get a green card to come live out her dream in the US. And Vlad thought he'd be very content in his, mari in his marriage of convenience, but it's becoming too difficult to continue this one-sided relationship. I feel like he has feelings for Elena and she maybe doesn't or doesn't show that she has feelings. So he's going to join the Bromance Book Club to learn how to make his wife love him, but all he's learned is what he deserves more. He's ready to go create his own sweeping romance, both on and off page. Is he writing a romance? That's cute. But then Elena's past life intrudes and they're happily ever after after is cast into doubt. So I wonder what all of that means, but I'm excited to read this. I think this one is on audio through my library. And I honestly hope that I do like it. I have an assumption that the celiac disease parts in this book will, in these books, both of them, will not be a major factor. I don't assume it to be. That's just something that I assume that's probably correct, <laughs> honestly. So um, we'll see what I think about these and I will go, I will go dive into them right now. Okay, I'm on chapter three of the Penny Reed book. So far we've met both of the main characters. There is Winnie and there is Byron. And I've also looked at all the chapters, maybe six chapters in Byron's perspective and over 20 in Winnie's. So I'm wondering why that is. I don't get why authors do that. Like why can't you flip flop? I don't know, it's just weird when there's an imbalance of number of chapters. Also, my brain just wants order and that is not order. <laughs> what I can tell right now is that Winnie was really into making content online. She's a science teacher and she loves making instructional content, STEM content online on Instagram lives or I think even YouTube lives. lives. She talks about TikTok too, um, which is just a little bit too, I guess, meta for me. <laughs> seeing like TikTok, like the title in a book. I don't know why. She kind of makes like sciencey content. Like the most recent one she did was talking about like different contents in sports drinks, cause that's relevant. She's gonna soon do one about bleaching her hair. She has actually like red hair, not like it is on the cover. So I assume she actually does bleach it based on the cover. And she said that she mainly does these videos for like instructional purposes also for other teachers out there to make fun projects for their classrooms which i thought was really cool coming from a person who is currently studying education so i really related to that but right now i'm on chapter three and no mention of celiac disease has popped up there has been one mention of gluten-free um she's with her roommate amelia so amelia is the one that's really close to byron because they are old childhood friends but winnie is just very uncomfortable around byron because he often corrects people especially her um especially with like her grammar and things that she meant to say and she's just very self-conscious in how she talks around him because she doesn't necessarily like being corrected all the time and almost every word that comes out of her mouth out of his mouth is a correction of some sort and she doesn't really like it amelia also has this job opening thing for winnie that she can apply to and i think it's like a social media sponsorship thing but you have to have a certain number of followers or something and Winnie is not there yet so they're coming up with ideas to gain a following and I assume it's like I said in the summary earlier Byron gets roped into that in some way to be her fake best friend or something. It's a little bit later I'm like 15% of the way through the book and we have our first mention of celiac disease but my only issue is it's a little bit of an inconsistency in my book. The heroine says that my caffeine aversion plus my wheat allergy plus my unwillingness to pay $4 a cup for coffee meant I rarely entered a coffee shop. Okay, she said wheat allergy here, just by the way. And so I was a little bit like, oh, is this not celiac then? Because a wheat allergy and celiac disease are two totally different things. They're similar, but they are not the same. And so then in the most recent scene that I read, the hero ends up bringing her gluten-free scones, which was so sweet of him. But then internally in her head, she says, how does he know that I'm celiac? So there's a little bit of an inconsistency here for me. Celiac is not a wheat allergy. It is not. The only time I ever say to people is verbally out loud, I'm allergic to gluten, even though it is not an allergy. I never internally say that because it's not actually an allergy. I just say I'm allergic to gluten to other people because it's way simpler than um, explaining to them what the autoimmune disease is. Like it's not an allergy. 
you know, it's an autoimmune disorder. This was a little bit uh, to me, you know, um, cause it's not a weed allergy. It is not. Um, also gluten is more than just wheat. It's wheat, rye, barley, and malt. Okay, another thing I'm just reading is apparently it's not common knowledge that she has celiac disease. She doesn't tell anybody. Like she doesn't go to restaurants and every time they go to restaurants, she like doesn't tell anybody that we have to go to a place that has gluten-free options because nobody knows because she doesn't want to tell anybody. I'm confused why. Like, why don't you just tell people? I'm just so confused. Why keep it a secret? Like, what's the point besides starving yourself or possibly eating something that's not gluten-free? And then she said that when she goes to restaurants, she just finds something on the menu that's wheat-free and least likely to have cross-contamination. But again, like I said, wheat-free and gluten-free are not the same thing. I'm, I'm, con I'm confused. <laughs> Okay, let me get out my notes for this next section. And then Ollie is also joining us, so you can see by him whacking. <laughs> He's just staring out the window. <laughs> Let's see. Say hi. I'm also, it's not on top of him, I'm holding it. Say hi, Ollie. He's just staring out into, into the street over there. <laughs> Your nails hurt though, dude. Okay, so I have finished 10 Trends to Seduce Your Best Friend by Penny Reed. I think I'm being generous by rating this book 2.5 stars. Honestly, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't enjoy being mean. That's why I didn't rate it like one or two stars. So take with that what you will. I may be thinking that Penny Reed just isn't for me. I've read a few books by her and her writing style and mine just don't jive well, which is totally fine. Not every author is for every reader, but I'll get into my general thoughts about the book and then I will go into my thoughts about the celiac disease representation in here. So I think I have already mentioned like what the book is about. It's a grumpy sunshine romance where these two characters have to pretend to be like friends online or something. I didn't know that these 10 trends to seduce your best friend, the, the trends in here were TikTok trends. And so it was just very meta and like, I don't know why every time I read the word TikTok in a book, it makes me cringe. Like, I don't know why. I know it's very prevalent in society right now and social media these days in life. These trends, she would like go into heavy detail about what each trend was and like what it entailed. But the thing that made it worse in my brain was like, it was a real trend that actually that's actually happened on TikTok. Like all 10 trends were like real trends on TikTok. I don't know why that like weirded me out. And then I think it would have been better if she made them like make fake ones like that weren't actually real. Cause she tried to explain step by step on what every trend was and what they needed to do for every trend and challenge boyfriend, girlfriend challenge thing, whatever. And I was like, this is just strange to me. Sorry, we changed angles because um, there was someone knocking at the door and I don't socialize with people, so. The place I was filming is right next to a window and I don't want them looking at me in a window. So we're gonna continue. <laughs> also, if I'm acting weird, it's cause that person is still out there. Apparently, I'm at my parents' house and apparently somebody's like working on their water line or something. And so I don't do well with strangers, <laughs> especially ones who come and knock at the door. So um, we're gonna be sitting with Kiki here. Hello, Candace. And I'm talking about this freaking book. So anyway, as I was mentioning, the TikTok trends were just like very cringy to me. It's a personal thing probably, but it was not something I wanted to read about. I also feel like with this TikTok stuff, if you're not on TikTok, this book will be very confusing for you. Like it does not describe it well for people who are not on TikTok. So if you're not on TikTok, um, I don't think you're gonna understand this all that well, especially those trends. And these trends also date back for like over a year ago, because this book was written a while ago, obviously before it was published, but these trends were popular like a while ago. So it doesn't matter if you join TikTok now, you wouldn't have seen the trends that were popular over a year ago that this author is mentioning in this book. So it's just like, if you're not on TikTok, you will probably be lost. I guess it's because I'm somebody who has one of my jobs is social media, doing all this stuff. I think I know now that I don't want to read books about social media anymore because it's a job that I do. And it's just weird to me. And I don't necessarily like 
reading about it or maybe it was just this book who knows i might pick a different one up later on in life i don't know but i think this book was way too long and there were parts that i liked about it i really liked the hero and his discovery with um some of the things that he's been going through if i were to rate the celiac disease part in here i would give it like a another a 2.5 out of 5 like it was like mediocre it was fine and now willow has noticed the guy working on the water line i read like the acknowledgement section of this book and i think i think the author was saying like oh winnie is based off of somebody but not me so is winnie based off of somebody that that um penny reed actually knows so does this person she actually know have celiac disease or does i don't think penny reed has celiac disease i've looked into it online i haven't seen anything about it she doesn't have to say that she has it obviously like you do not have to out yourself when it comes to any illness, autoimmune disease, dis uh, disability whatsoever. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying like I was not able to, I don't know, I guess verify if this was own voices or not. So I don't know if Penny Reed herself has celiac disease or if this person this book was based off of has celiac disease or it was just another added rep that she put in the book. That being said, I didn't necessarily love the representation. I have one of the most severe cases of celiac disease you can come by. Some people think that celiac disease is like, um, kind of like a peanut allergy. If you're in the same room with it, um, you'll like get on, go into um, anaphylactic shock. No, we do not go into anaphylactic shock. It's basically like having the stomach flu for a couple of days and you cannot leave the toilet. Um, and you also get hives, but also everyone else's symptoms and everyone else is like, yeah, symptoms are different. They're not all the same. Just because someone has celiac disease does not mean somebody else will have the same severity of celiac disease. But I myself have one of like the most severe cases. That being said, Winnie's whole thing about her celiac disease or in, in what she calls it, wheat allergy, was not my vibe. Cause like, I'm really severe and even I, don't do what Winnie did. So if you're my friend, you've been out with me, you've hung out with me before, you know that I have to go to a restaurants that have gluten-free options for me. Not wheat-free options, gluten-free options, okay? And it's a place that I've eaten before and or has a whole gluten-free menu. So I do go out to eat at places. <laughs> I, I go out to eat at restaurants. There aren't many, but like I still go out to eat at restaurants and I always make sure to verify with the waitress, chef, whatever the case may be. I'm like, hey, I have a really severe, I tell them gluten allergy because again, like I said before, you do not want to go into the giant spiel as to what an autoimmune disorder is. So you basically say, I have celiac disease. It's a giant, enormous gluten allergy. I'm very, 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 very sensitive. Please, can you make sure X, Y, and Z, there's no cross-contamination. Everything's prepared separately. Like, and like, 99% of the time they will listen to you and like, like do what you say because they do not want someone to get sick at their restaurant. So I was very shocked when Winnie was saying like, oh, I don't eat at restaurants, any restaurant ever, even if it has a gluten-free option because like I could get really, really sick. And she also does not tell anybody that she has celiac disease. So she doesn't tell the waiter or waitress, hey, be sure to make sure my food is separate from anybody else's and cook separately and all that stuff. Like she doesn't even tell them that. So how would they be able to prepare it safely for her? And so it just like baffled me to be like, why is Winnie making a big deal out of this and not going to eat at restaurants that have gluten-free options? She also doesn't tell anybody, which is like, why the hell wouldn't you tell somebody this is how you live? Like, you don't hide something like this. Like, there was zero point for Penny Reed to make Winnie, like, hide her celiac disease. Like, what was the point? Man, this clip is chaotic. <laughs> My dad just came home to talk to the water people. Anyway, there were some things about this that I did like. I loved how the hero went and took like a whole cooking class to learn how to make gluten-free meals for Winnie. Like that was super sweet. I loved that. I'm just looking at also my highlights on this book and there were just some things that I was like, hmm. Like one point uh, verbatim, Winnie says, 
restaurant food always makes me sick due to cross-contamination. Now this is not true. Like maybe 90% of all my restaurant experiences ever dealing with gluten-free food have been amazing. There have been restaurants that I have gotten sick at, but that's just the way of the world. That's how it is. People sometimes claim that their stuff is gluten-free, but it actually gets me sick probably because of cross-contamination. But that's 10% of my whole entire life that it's ever, or even 5% of that whole uh, dining out experience that's ever gotten me sick. And you know what? I didn't die from it. Yeah, it sucks. I get it. It sucks getting sick. It's something I avoid like the plague. Don't get me wrong. But also I want to live. I want to go eat with friends. I want to go eat with my family. I'm an introvert, but I also don't want to spend 100% alone eating in my bedroom. You know, the hero was again really sweet. He did something that I always do with like my roommates that I've ever had. I've been like, we got to keep the counters completely clean because like even like a crumb of something could get me sick on the counter if like I touch it or it gets my food or whatever. Um, and so he like wipes down all of the counters in the kitchen all the time. I really liked that. Something that I didn't understand was um, when he's saying, I don't order from restaurants that aren't exclusively gluten free. This is just baffling to me because I think this takes place, what does this take place in? Does it take place in New York? Part of it takes place in New York and the other part takes place somewhere else. I don't know. I lived in Houston until I was, 20 and um that is like one of the largest cities most populous cities in the entire at least country it's one of the top five biggest cities in the country i know pretty well maybe i didn't do enough research but i do not know in that entire city a restaurant that is only gluten-free like i've known bakeries that are i know there's one in um, disney springs that's entirely gluten-free but I have never come across a restaurant that markets itself and is an entirely gluten-free restaurant. So that's what I was a little confused by. Maybe Penny Reed knows of restaurants that are like that, but I have never come across one and I've been living like this almost my entire life. So I don't know, maybe it's something I have to look into that I know nothing about, but that's something that I was just like, what? Even if Winnie did buy food at only gluten-free restaurants, like what restaurants were those? Like why didn't Penny Reed put that in the book? Like what restaurants are those? Cause maybe I would like, I would like to know that. Or maybe it's fictional. A girl can dream if that is actually real, you know? This is Editing Avery here. And I just want to pop on here for a second cause I read this book a few weeks ago and I just came across something that is very prevalent to what I'm talking about in here. So I talked to my mom, I want to say about like this book specifically about how this girl would only order food from solely gluten-free restaurants. And I'm like, where the heck is that? You know, like, it's not a common thing. You know, it is not common at all. And I literally was like, I don't even think they exist. I will say, I found one that exists. I literally went to an H-E-B. If you're not in Texas, you don't know what H-E-B is. But it's basically like Texas's giant grocery store chain. And the um, person bagging us, like bagging our groceries, uh, saw all of our gluten-free stuff. And he was like, oh my gosh, are you celiac too? And apparently he was celiac. And he was like, we were like chatting while he was helping us with our groceries and everything. And he told us about this restaurant in Austin. It's called Wilderwood. And it's entirely gluten-free. And um, I was like, wow, next time I go to Austin, I got to go there. Um, so I stand corrected that I found one restaurant. Um, if you know more restaurants, let me know. Um, but it is not a common thing, you know? Like, this is not a common thing. So I don't know, it kind of peeved me a little bit to like, maybe... Penny Raid inten intentionally made this to be like fictional, um, but it is not a common thing for you to just pop on into a gluten-free restaurant. Like if you want to go out to eat, let's go to this solely gluten-free restaurant. It doesn't really exist almost anywhere. I bet there are very few restaurants in the entire world, let alone the US, that is solely gluten-free. So I wanted to add that to this conversation because I think I said, no, the thing doesn't exist. Like it does exist and like, Reflecting even before I found out about this restaurant, I knew it existed probably. I just had never come in contact with it. So it was kind of like baffling to me that this character would just pop into a gluten for restaurant whenever she wanted. And it sounded like there were multiple different restaurants that she could go to. So anyway, it just, it kind of just, I don't know. Number one made me kind of jealous because I'm like, that doesn't exist. So like, I wish it did in real life. And I don't know, it just like kind of peeved me because I'm like, that's not, that's not real. Like... <laughs> like it doesn't it's not something that actually happens to somebody with celiac disease that you live in close vicinity with multiple gluten-free restaurants around you if it is let me know i stand corrected um but not with me and my journey and my other friends who are celiac so 
<laughs> I just thought I'd put that out there. Okay, back, back to the regular video. And just like another thing that bothered me was like the whole continuing talk about like, oh yeah, this is wheat free. This is wheat free. I made, I bought everything wheat free, blah, blah, blah. But it's not only wheat. Like that's what pissed me off, honestly. Like it's not only wheat it's gluten wheat and gluten are different things wheat is in gluten gluten has multiple different things in it and oh my gosh sorry this dog is not liking the water people outside anyway um that just really peeved me this entire book because that's not true like it's gluten it's not wheat anyway i'm gonna leave it at that i really wanted to rate this book lower than i did but i feel like i was being generous i don't enjoy rating books low but um the representation was just like okay to me i much preferred literally the hero's um whole um reaction and treatment of winnie celiac disease than winnie herself honestly <laughs> which is saying something so i really loved the caretaking thought that went into the hero like making sure everything was good to go for winnie for eating and everything i really liked that but again there were just some things in here that really peeved me. So I'm gonna stop talking about this book because I do not wanna talk about it anymore. I don't wanna think about it anymore. I'm sorry if you love this book, by the way, but I just didn't, it did not vibe well with me. Anyway, um, I am going to take a break and then I'm going to pick up the other book for this video, which was the one that I was the most hesitant on and most like unsure on with the rep. And so like, oh, I'm dreading if both of these books have like mediocre rep for me. Okay, everyone, I finished the prologue of Isn't It Romantic and chapter one. So technically like two chapters. I kind of updated you at the beginning of the second book. So I thought I'd update you at the beginning of this one as well. So this is the romance between Vlad and is it Yelena, I think? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm gonna figure out soon. Um, but I'm listening to this audiobook through Libby. So I don't have a physical copy or an ebook with me like I did for the previous book in this vlog. So I'm just going by what I'm listening and what I remember and what I conveniently write down and I forgot to write down her name. And there is a plane in the sky. Okay. Apparently Vlad and Yelena um, got married because Yelena needed to go to college in America and Vlad is a very popular hockey player in America. They're both from Russia though. They think they're like childhood besties and he agreed to marry her so that she could go to school. But at the beginning of his book, he's realizing like he wants a real romantic relationship like all of his friends do that are the previous books in the romance book club. Um, and I've only read book one, so take with that what you will. But he's at one of the weddings for uh, one of the previous couples. And um, Yelena just happens to show up and tell him that she wants a divorce because she's going to go back to Russia. And so the whole book, I assume, based on the summary that we read, is about him trying to win Yelena back. So far, when it comes to celiac disease, that name has not popped up yet at all. He has claimed that he has been recently diagnosed with a gluten allergy and has irritable bowel symptoms. I don't know if that means that he has irritable bowel, irritable bowel bowel dang that is a tongue twister y'all i get why people say ibs because it's it doesn't say specifically ibs so i'm wondering if they mean ibs and if that's going to have a role in the book too this has not said celiac disease yet so i'm gonna go out on a limb here and just like be like okay you haven't said celiac yet i'm okay with you saying gluten allergy but if celiac does pop up in here i'm gonna be like dang dude again it's not a gluten allergy <laughs> anyway, I'm also being very nitpicky because this is something that I have lived with almost my entire life. And so I'm very nitpicky about representation like this because I want it done well. One thing that I did like is that he had a, cause one of the other groomsmen has like some tummy, tummy, tummy issues right before his speech, he's the best man. And Vlad goes in to bring his emergency kit for when he has stomach problems and tries to help him out. And I was like, that is a great idea. I don't know why I've never heard about that or never thought about it before, but I definitely need an emergency kit. Right now my emergency kit is like lactate pills and gas sex in my purse. And that's like all that I have. <laughs> but he legit has like this specific tea that helps with your stomach, this um, essential oil that you wanna roll, huh, rub over your stomach to help with cramps and extra pair of underwear. And I was like, I need all that crap. Thank you, yes, I need to, I need to make a bag like that. If I could drive, because I'm not medically allowed to drive anymore, but if I could drive, I definitely would have a bag like that in my car. And then he also takes some kind of daily medicine. I don't know what that is involved with, but 
from what I understand and what I know about celiac disease, there is not a daily medication that you can take. So maybe this is more along the lines of his IBS. If he has specifically IBS, he's just said that he has irritable bowel, bowel symptoms, not syndrome, you know? There's a quote that I like in here that I wanna mention. Vlad is talking about um, how some of his friends have been making fun of him because of his tummy problems. And he's like, this is not something to joke about. Like it's actually pretty serious, which is great because remember at the beginning of this book, I was like, it was just gonna be Tutti Magooty all the time and making jokes about it. I'm not gonna be happy. So he's, he's showing me that he does not think this is funny. He says, and no one understood what it was like to be at constant war with your own body, which <laughs> ring a ding ding exactly how we feel okay i totally feel him so right now i'm good with vlad i like him um so we're on a positive note we're starting out we're starting out really well hi friends it's going to be the end of this interesting reading vlog um i have finished isn't it romantic by Liz K. adams and i surprisingly very much enjoyed this book. I really love Lissa K. Adams' cheese factor, <laughs> like literally and figuratively. There's a lot of cheese discussion in this book, <laughs> but um, no, I, I actually kind of really love like cheesy lines and cheesy things in romance books sometimes. And um, I feel like Lissa K. Adams is great at doing that, honestly, in a fun and romantic way. I think I'm going to be giving this book four stars. I really loved the relationship between Elena and Vlad? Is it Vlad? Darn it. I'm really bad at character names. <laughs> um, but I really loved their like marriage in trouble. I think that's how you would describe it. Marriage in trouble romance. I also loved all of the side characters in here and I definitely would have known more about the side characters if I read book two and book three. I might have to go back and read them. I know Brie, my lovely friend Brie, she loves book two even though most people don't. So I think that's why I was worried about reading book two like reading the other books in the series because a lot of people don't really like book two, um, but Brie loves it. So maybe I'll be on Brie's side here. Uh, I'm just, I'm always scared for controversial books, y'all. I don't know, because I don't want to spend my time and money if I have to buy it um, on a book that I might not like. Anyway, we're not talking about that. So isn't it romantic? I really loved just their relationship in general and how sweet it was, how caring Vlad was. He was such a cinnamon roll. And I love a man that can cry. Like I love a man that can that is in touch with his emotions and is not afraid to cry. I love that in here. And so Vlad, it's a total green flag to me. <laughs> I wasn't that big of a fan of the, I don't know if it is mis miscommunication trope, but the lack of communication between these two characters at times, especially because they have not basically talked in six years since they got married and they both think the other person doesn't want to be married to them for whatever reason you figure out when you read the book and their feelings are both hurt by what happened six years ago but they didn't explain why so i don't know i just felt like all of this could have been avoided if they just talked to each other six years ago but they also said like thank goodness we did it because we were totally different people than we are now six years ago so we may not be where we are now and be in love like we are now if they did reveal their feelings back then, but I don't know. Um, let me know what y'all think about this book in the comments. I'd love to know. When it comes to the celiac disease gluten-free representation in here, I don't I don't know what to think. I don't really have solid viewpoints on here other than I really, really, really love the discussion of gluten-free food in here. <laughs> Never once in the book does the term celiac disease pop up. So I am not viewing this book as celiac disease representation. He just says gluten allergy. And so that's what I am assuming this is. Uh, I have not necessarily researched gluten allergies themselves. So I don't know a lot of experience or stuff about that. I don't know if Lissa K. Adams thoroughly meant to write about a person with a gluten allergy or alluded to the fact that it's celiac disease because celiac disease and a gluten allergy are not the same thing. But I don't know because I'm not Lissa K. Adams and she never wrote the term celiac disease in the book. I'm gonna judge it on it not being celiac disease, um, just a gluten allergy. Correct me if I'm wrong people, but I believe just Vlad in here has a form of IBS and um, a gluten intolerance or allergy. He never specifically says celiac disease, so I don't think he has celiac disease. But I really did love the discussion of gluten-free cooking and gluten-free foods in here. Like Elena does not know that Vlad has been diagnosed with this um, food intolerance, food allergy, and she takes it upon herself to make sure that 
she makes all of her home home cooked Russian meals gluten free for Vlad, and she goes out of her way to do all the research for it. I love that. There's also a specific like scene in here that I really related to. <laughs> so Vlad really loves to eat cheese. Just by the way, there was a bunch of cheese discussion here. Um, but with with cheese, you eat crackers most of the time, right? And gluten free crackers are not the best thing in the world. <laughs> But you know, you take what you can get, right? Like you eat what you can and his friends decide to try some of his crackers and immediately spit them out because they taste like cardboard. And I bet they do. I've been told by many of my friends that my crackers taste like cardboard. I literally went out to dinner one time with some friends and they I have to eat different chips than they do at a Mexican restaurant. They have like baked chips that I assume literally taste like cardboard. I just need something to put queso on, you know? Anyway, <laughs> um, they've literally done that before. They have spit out the chips being like, you eat this? Like, yeah. Would you rather me eat queso from a spoon? Like, I need something to dip it in. I don't care. <laughs> so it wasn't really relatable at times. So I really liked that. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video where I was like, we're just gonna be making fun of Vlad like tooting all the time, like I'm not gonna be happy because that's kind of stereotypical, whatever. Vlad like put his friends in their place because they would make fun of him sometimes and be and he would be stone faced, straight faced, being like, This is not a joke. My body is in pain. You cannot please don't do that. And like he like whips them into shape about that and I loved that. I make self-deprecating jokes about myself, but it's not the best thing in the world to get jokes from your friends about this, especially if I'm having tummy issues and something does happen, like I really would rather not be made fun of for it. I thought the rap in here was pretty good when it came to the discussion of IBS and just eating gluten free in general, because I do live through both of those. So um, I really liked this and I think the rap was done really well, but not necessarily celiac disease. So if you're wanting a celiac disease book, I don't think this is it, but you can relate a lot to our similar tummy issues and food intolerances. <laughs> That's going to be the end of this vlog. So I really didn't like a book and I really did like a book. So plus there and I liked a book I didn't really expect to, which is saying a lot. I'm very happy about that. Please let me know if you have any romance, romance book recommendations down below that have celiac disease. Let me know also what y'all thought about this style of vlog of me reading two specific books because of a specific com commonality. Similarity. There you go. There's the word I'm looking for. Similarity. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.